big data is playing a game changing role in shaping most of the industry domains and it comprises of three kinds of data structure semi structured and unstructured data. But for Hadoop developer the actual game starts after the data is being loaded into HDFS. So for data transfer we have various data ingestion tools and Apache scope is one of the most suitable tool for structured data transfer between RDBMS and Hadoop. Hello everyone. This is Neha from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on scope tutorial. Now let's look at the topics to be covered in this session. First and foremost, I will tell you about the problems that are associated with the relational database system. Next, I will introduce you the concept of scope and its interesting features. Once you understand the basics of scope, then I will dive a little deeper and tell you about its architecture. After that, we will be jumping into the demo part to understand scope commands and its working. Without wasting any further time, let's get started. So what were the problems associated with the relational database system? As I have already mentioned that for a Hadoop developer actual game starts after the data is being loaded in HDFS and the developers play around this data in order to gain various insights that are hidden in the data stored in HDFS. So for this analysis the data residing in the RTBMS needs to be transferred to HDFS and you all know that the task of writing MapReduce code for importing and exporting the data from relational database to HDFS is tedious. So this is where Apache scope comes to rescue and remove the pain of data ingestion. So why do we need scope? It's a known fact that before big data came into existence. The entire data was stored in relational database servers in the relational database structure. But with the advancement of scope it makes the life of developers easier by providing CLI for importing and exporting the data and scope internally converts a command into MapReduce task which are then executed over HDFS. It uses yarn framework to import and export the data which provides fault tolerance on top of parallelism. It also uses yarn framework to import and export the data which provides fault tolerance on top of parallelism. Not only that it is also very useful for data analysis high in performance and provides command line interface. Now let's understand what is scope. So before I tell you what is scope let me tell you how the name scope came into existence. By now I hope that you have got an idea that it is used for data transfer between relational database and HDFS. So before I tell you what is scope let me first tell you how the name came into existence. The first two letters in scope stands for the first two letters in SQL and the last three letters in scope refers to the last three letters in Hadoop that is OOP. So it clearly depicts that it is SQL to Hadoop and Hadoop to SQL. That is how the name of scope came into existence. So what is scope? It is a tool used for data transfer between RDBMS like MySQL, Oracle, SQL, etc., and Hadoop like Hive, HDFS, HBase, etc. It is used to import the data from RDBMS to Hadoop and export the data from Hadoop to RDBMS. Simple. Again, Scoop is one of the top projects by Apache Software Foundation and works brilliantly with relational databases such as Teradata, Netezza, Oracle, MySQL, etc. It also uses MapReduce mechanism for its operations like import and export work and work on a parallel mechanism as well as fault tolerance. As I have already mentioned that it provides command line interface for importing and exporting the data. The developers just have to provide the basic information like database authentication source destination operations etc. And the rest of the work will be done by scoop tool itself. Sounds much reliable correct. Now let's move further and talk about some of the amazing features of scope for big data developers. First full load Apache scope can load whole table by a single command. You can also load all the tables from a database using a single command. Next incremental load scope provides the facility of incremental load where you can load the parts of a table wherever it is updated. Next parallel import and export. Again, as already mentioned, Scoop uses YARN framework to import and export the data, which provides fault tolerance on top of parallelism. Next, compression. You can compress your data by using gzip algorithm with compress argument or by specifying compression codec argument. Next, Kerberos security integration. So, what is Kerberos? It's a computer network authentication protocol which works on the basis of tickets to allow the nodes that are communicating over a non secure network. To prove their identity to one another in a secure manner. Next, load data directly into Hive and HBase. Here it is very simple. You can load the data directly to Apache Hive for analysis, and you can also dump your data in HBase, which is a NoSQL database. Now let's see what's next. 
the architecture is one of the empowering Apache Scoop with its benefits. Now, as we know the features of Apache Scoop, let's move ahead and try to understand Apache Scoop's architecture and its working. So when we submit our job or a command through Scoop, it is mapped into map task which brings the chunks of data from HDFS. And these chunks are exported to a structured data destination. And combining all these exported chunks of data, we receive the whole data at the destination, which in most of the cases is RDBMS server. Next, reduce phase is required in case of aggregations. But Apache Scoop just imports and exports the data. It does not perform any aggregations. Map job launch multiple mappers depending on the number defined by the user. For scoop import, each mapper task will be assigned with the part of data that is to be imported. And scoop distributes the input data among all the mappers equally in order to achieve high performance. Then each mapper creates a connection with the database using JDBC and fetches the part of the data assigned by the scoop and then writes that data to HDFS, Hive, or HBase based on the arguments provided in the command line interface. So this is how scoop import and export works. Like they gather the metadata again, it submits only map job. The reduce phase will never occur here, and then it stores the data in HDFS storage. Coming to scoop export, it's the same thing. The data will be reversed back to RDBMS. So here, the scoop import tool will import each table of the RDBMS in Hadoop, and each row of the table will be considered as a record in the HDFS, and all the records are stored as text data in the text files or binary data in sequence files. On the other hand, the scoop export tool will export the Hadoop files back to the RDBMS tables. Again, the records in the HDFS files will be the rows of a table, and those are read and passed into a set of records and delimited with the user specified delimiter. So, this is all about the scoop architecture and its import and export. Now, let's execute some scoop commands and understand how it works. So, at the first, we have scoop import. That is, it imports the data from RDBMS in Hadoop. The command goes very simple. Here, you have to just provide the connection for MySQL, your IP address, your database name, your table name, the username for MySQL user. If you have set privileges for password, you can specify the password or it is not required, and the target directory. Now, let's see how to execute. So, I'll open my terminal and check whether all my Hadoop daemons are up and running or not. So, I can see that all my Hadoop daemons are up and running. So now let's execute scoop help and see whether the scoop has been properly installed or not. So these are the available commands in scoop. Here I will show you the execution and explain a few of these commands. Now this is also properly being set. Now I will open another terminal and connect to MySQL database. The command goes like this. My user is edureka, so I'm giving it as edureka. You can give it as root if your user is root. Simple. So now I'm into MySQL database. If you want to create a database, you can create the database by giving this command, create database, database name, etc. As I have already created a database, so I'll just specify show databases command to list the database present in the MySQL database. So now these are the list of database present here. So now I want to use employees database. So I'll give use employees. Database got changed. Now I want to list the tables present in the employees database. So I'll give show tables. So these are the 11 tables present in the database employees. Now let's say I want to use employees table. So what will I do? I'll just give select star from employees. That is table name. So it's just a huge amount of data that is present in this database. So there are these many rows present in this table. Now open the other terminal where you have executed this command and here I will show you how to import the data present in that table to HDFS. So how we are going to do that by using scope import command. The command goes like this. The IP here is localhost and you know that employees is my database name and the username will be edureka and the table that I have chosen is employees. So I have not set any privileges for password, so I'm not specifying the password over here. So it got executed and you can see the number of job counters, the map reduce framework, the input records, output records, etc. So what happens after executing this command? The map task will be executed at the backend. Now let's check the web UI of HDFS. 
that is the web UI port for HDFS is localhost 50070. And let's see where the data got imported. One important thing to note I have not specified target directory. So by default, the data will be imported to this folder user, edureka, and employees. So here you can see the four different part files where our data got imported. So you might be thinking why four, correct? Here I have not specified the number of mappers. So by default, it takes the number of mappers to three and then gives the output in four different part files. So let's open the part file and see how the output will be. So here you can see the data is imported from RDBMS to HDFS. There's lots of data being present over here. I'm just scrolling down and it's not coming to an end. Similarly, the output will be same in the other part files as well. So this is all about the simple scope import command without specifying the target directory and the number of mappers. Now let's see how to import the data from RDBMS to HDFS by specifying the target directory. This part remains out to be the same. Now I will do one thing. I'll specify the number of mappers as one so that your output will be in just one single part file and then I will specify the target directory as well. And I will name the target directory as employee 10 enter. Again, it takes a lot of time to execute because there is a lot of data present in the database. So it got executed and retrieved these many records. Again, you can see the map reduce framework, the number of bytes written, number of read operations, write operations, etc. Now again, let's go to the HDFS browser and see the output. So I had specified the target directory name as employee 10. So you can see it here. And the output is just in one single part file because I have specified the number of mappers as one. In this case, you can control the number of mappers independently from the number of files present in the directory. So the entire records will be present in one single part file. So this is the output. Now, let me tell you how to import the command using where clause. Here you can import a subset of the table using the where clause in scoop import tool. It executes a corresponding SQL query in the respective database server and stores the result in a target directory in HDFS. So this is how the command goes. The same command as before. I'll just change the name of the target directory. I'll specify employee 11 and I will increase the number of mappers to three. And here I will specify the where clause. So let's give a condition like where the employee number will be greater than 49,000. It should display the output. Enter. So what you expect your output will be. So here it displays the output records of the employees whose employee number is greater than 49,000. So here it retrieved these many records which are about the employee number 49,000. Now let's check the output. So I have specified the target directory name as employee 11. So here you can see the output that it has retrieved the records of employee number which is more than 49,000. So I hope you understand how to do this. Next, let's see how to import all the tables from the RDBMS database server to the HDFS. Here, each table data is stored in a separate directory and the directory name is same as the table name. It is mandatory that every table in that database must have a primary key field. The command will be simple like simple import, but just that you have to remove the table name and you have to replace the import with import all tables. That's all. So it will retrieve all the tables present in the employees. Okay, so it imported all the tables from RDBMS to HDFS. Now let's check the output. Again, I have not specified the target directory file. So by default, it will be in user edureka and you can see here it imported all the tables present in the database to HDFS. So these are the various tables present in RDBMS and now it is present in HDFS. So this is how import all tables command works. So this was all about executing import command in various ways. Now let's move further and see how does scoop export works. It exports the data from HDFS to RDBMS, correct? Again, the command goes very simple. You have to specify the connection, your table name, username, and instead of the target directory, you have to specify the export directory path. So let's see how it works. One important thing to notify, the target table must exist in the target database. That is, the data is stored as records in HDFS. 
and these records are read and passed and delimited with the user specified delimiter. The default operation is to insert all the records from the input files to the database using the insert statement. In update mode, Scoop generates the update statement that replaces the existing record in the database. So first we are creating an empty table where we will export our data. I am going to create a table called employee 0. The primary key value should never be null, so I am specifying it as not null. So here I created an empty table called employee 0 and now I'll show you how the scoop export works. Here instead of import I'll make it as export. This is the database name and I have created a table called employee 0 and I'm going to specify the path for export directory. Simple that's all. So you can see here it exported all these records into the RDBMS. So now let's cross check. I'm going to give select count star from the table name that I have specified to export the tables. So you can see the entire records got exported to this table. So this is how the scoop export works. Now let's see how to list the database present in the relational database. Here you need not even specify the database name because you're going to list the database that is present in the relational database system. So you're going to specify list databases and execute the command. So the databases present in the relational database system is test JDBC test employees and information schema. Again, let's cross check. I'm going to give show databases. It retrieved the same database. So the result tallies. So we can also list the tables present in the database. Let's see how to list all the tables present in the database. Again, it's very simple. You have to just specify the database name like here and give list tables instead of import. So you can see that it listed all the tables present in the database employees. So again, let's cross check. Show tables. Same thing. And now let's see what is code gen. In object oriented application, every database table has one data access object class that contains getter and setter methods to initialize the objects. And code gen generates DAO class automatically. And it also generates the DAO class in Java based on the table schema structure. So this is a simple command. Let's see how to execute it. Here I will give scoop code gen and give the connection and the database name as employees. And I'm going to specify the table name as well. So it is going to create an employee char file in which the backend code will be generated. So I'll copy this path and jump into this directory. So you can see here that it created employees class jar file and the Java object file as well. So now let's open the file system and check for the file. So what was the name of the file? It ends with 539D9. So here is the folder. So in this you can see the object file that is being generated. So this is the packet code that is being generated. So this is all about how the scoop code gen works. So I hope you understood the concept of scoop and it's working. That's all for today's session. Thank you and have a nice day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!